Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. So just in case nobody's ever told you. I want to tell you in this room and all of you watching by television all around the world in these 63 languages this program is translated into. Whether you're in China or Russia or India or Africa, you can have power. Father, we thank you for the wonderful ministry of the Holy Spirit. I know that we don't even begin to know how valuable the Holy Spirit is in our daily lives. And we're so grateful for him. And we want to give honor to you tonight and to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit. We thank you for teaching us. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. So we need him. Even as we're trying to teach about him tonight, we need him to teach us. So thank you for all that we're going to learn and understand in a deeper way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, a hundred years ago, a man named William Booth, who started the Salvation Army, <laughs> made some very astounding statements. There were six that he made. I'm only going to talk about one of them tonight. But one of the things that he said that he feared for the church in the future is that we might someday have religion without the Holy Spirit. You say, well, how in the world can you have religion without the Holy Spirit? Well, you can't really have a relationship with Christ without the Holy Spirit, but it's very easy to have dead, dry, dull religion without the Holy Spirit. I know because I had it for a lot of years in my life. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It just amounts to maybe marching off to a building somewhere, and you can even be sincere. You can even do it with a love for God. I think you can even do it and really be born again. I was born again. I, I trusted Christ as my Savior. I understood the doctrines of the church. But I had no victory, no power in my everyday life because it wasn't that I wasn't being taught anything about the Holy Spirit. We heard about the Trinity all the time and understood that doctrine of one God, three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I was taught about the blood of Christ. I was taught about communion. There were many things that I was taught about. And in particular, in the denomination I was in, we learned a lot about salvation through grace. So we, I, I had a great foundation. But it's sad to say that in all the years that I was in that denomination, either I never heard anybody tell me, which is possible, you know, sometimes we're just not at a place yet where we're ready to hear, or nobody was ever telling me that I could have the Holy Spirit filling me, living in my heart, guiding and directing my life, and that he wanted to come into close fellowship with me. And when I was introduced to that aspect of the Holy Spirit, things began to change for me absolutely radically. And I believe it's a time that God wants us to begin to talk about the Holy Spirit a little bit more. There are actually people today, if you talk about the anointing, they don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, if you talk about uh, hearing from God, they think you're some weirdo from outer space. If you talk about being led by the Spirit, they don't even really have any real clue what that is. And my teacher, my, my job as a teacher in the body of Christ is to make sure that to the best of my ability that you are filled with and led by the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul said that it was his ministry, his mission, and that it was the mission and, and, and the ministry of all who are calling themselves ministers of Christ to cause people, the Amplified Bible says, to obtain and be led by the Holy Spirit. We're not here just to get God to do everything we want him to do so we can just have our happy little lives and get all of our needs met. God wants to meet our needs and he definitely wants us to be happy, but We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. And to be led by the Holy Spirit, 
to be honest, if you really want to know the truth, if you're going to really be led by the Spirit, your life's going to get pretty exciting because you're never going to be 100% sure on any day when you get up exactly what's going to happen. Amen? And so that's what keeps life exciting versus just dead, dry, boring religion where you're following a few rules and regulations and you go to church every Sunday, but all week you live like the rest of the world out there, then go back to church the next Sunday and hope somehow or another you can get forgiveness for the wretched life you lived that week, then go back out and do it again and just repeat it over and over and over and over and over. We have so much available to us that it is absolutely amazing. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, and I'm not going to try to stand here and explain the Trinity to you because the math that we've learned, it doesn't calculate right. But we have one God who is three persons, or he manifests in three different ways. God the Father, God the Son, our Lord and Savior, who actually is the Word made flesh who came to dwell among us. That's why you got to love the Word because... When you love the Word, you're loving Jesus. When you, when you get into the Word of God, you're fellowshipping with Jesus. You need to see it as a real living thing, not just some book that you need to read a chapter out of every day out of some kind of duty and obligation to God, thinking that you're going to get a check mark on your spiritual calendar now because you read a chapter of the Bible today. And I say that because that used to be the mentality that I had. I read a chapter a day, didn't understand any of it, but thought I'd gotten my check mark that day for reading the Word. You got to love the Word and study the Word, not just gloss over it. And I love to think about that when I, that I'm fellowshipping, these are God's words to us. And then there's God, the Holy Spirit, who is actually the power of God that's sent to us. It's the presence of God. He makes the presence of God real to us. It's the ability of God the Holy Spirit brings us gifts and talents. It's the Holy Spirit that enables me to preach. It's the Holy Spirit who enabled these other people up here to sing. And it's the Holy Spirit who has enabled you to do whatever it is that you do. I don't care if you're a window washer or a janitor or a house cleaner or a mom or a business professional or a beautician or whatever it is that you do. God gives, I, th I like to say it this way, He God, of course, is creative in every way, but I think he gives to each one of us a little piece of himself. It is amazing to me the things that people like to do. And I look at that and think that would drive me crazy, but they actually like it because God has gifted them to do it and given them a desire to do it. Now, the place we get into trouble is we, when we try to start doing what somebody else is doing, but it's not our fit. It's not what God has given us to do. So we must be very careful in the world today because there's so much competition and the world says, well, this job makes you important, but this job doesn't make you important. So many times, even though we're not gifted for this so-called more important job, we would be really happy just being down here, being behind the scenes, doing this simple little thing day in and day out. We don't want to be number one. We don't want to be out in front of people. There's this push from society to climb the ladder of success, even though, even if you do climb it, you find out your ladder's leaned against the wrong building and you've been miserable your whole life because you're not being what God wants you to be. Amen? The Holy Spirit was present at creation. The Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the earth. And God said Jesus was present at creation. And God was present there. We see the Trinity right in the very first chapter of the Bible. The Holy Spirit was present at Jesus' baptism. Jesus himself was baptized with the Holy Spirit. If he needed to be baptized in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, have the power of the Holy Spirit in his life, how much more do we need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives? The 12 apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were even told, don't you go out and try to do anything until you receive that power from on high. 
I happen to be excited about teaching about this tonight, and I hope it really touches some people in a very profound and a personal way. Let's begin to look at uh, the Bible in, in John chapter 16, verses 7 and 8. Some of you are going to find right here in the next few minutes what your problem is, and you're about to get your answer. <laughs> and I really believe that. Jesus said, however, I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say that it's going to be profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you if I go away. Because if I don't go away, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, the standby will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Now, we're going to leave that up for a minute because I want us to look at a few parts of this. How in the world, I'm sure the disciples thought, how in the world could we be better off if Jesus went away? Well, first of all, Jesus was with them, but the Holy Spirit was going to come and live in them. Now, with is good, but in is better. Amen? <laughs> I mean, with is great, but in is just a whole lot closer. Hallelujah. And uh, Jesus was in a human body, just like we are. And so he could only be one place at one time, talking to one person at one time. But amazingly, the Holy Spirit can be everywhere all the time, speaking to, teaching, leading, and guiding every single person. Now, all of these things that, these words here that describe the Holy Spirit, he doesn't just say, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. First of all, the main name of the Holy Spirit is the Comforter. My gosh, do we ever need comfort. And how often do we run to people to get comfort and then get mad at them because they don't give it to us? Come on. Well, I'm hurting and you don't understand that I'm hurting and I needed you and you weren't there for me. <laughs> Come on. And I'm not saying that, you know, we shouldn't minister to one another and help one another, but I'm going to tell you a secret. Before you go to any person when you're hurting to get comfort, go to God first. Come on now. You go to God first. If I need comfort and I go to God first and he wants to use my husband, he will use my husband. But if he doesn't want to use Dave, he might use Mike or he might use Penny or he might use... Chris, or he might use one of my kids, we need to let God be God and stop, stop trying to dictate to him what he needs to do all the time. So you go first to God. Now listen to me, and when we begin to lean on God in this way for every little thing in our life, see, that was the most amazing thing to me when I really was introduced to the power of the Holy Spirit in my daily life was, I mean, when, when I had a serious problem, I went to God. But all these other so-called little things in my life, I wasn't going <laughs> to, I mean, if I was having trouble fixing my hair, I wasn't going to ask God to help me with my hair. You know, if I was bowling and wasn't bowling good, I wasn't going to ask God to help me bowl. And some of you even right now, you're thinking, oh, come on, God's got better. You know, you think, he, we, we get concerned about praying about little things. Listen, everything's little to God. <laughs> Are you with me? Even your biggest problem is little to God. So why do we think that we can bring him this big stuff, but the little stuff don't matter? It's all little to God. Because we could pile up every problem. We've all got our worst problems. We could put them all together and just say, here, God, here's the, all of our big, terrible problems. God, we don't know if you can handle this or not. He said, oh, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. And, you know, there's a lot of little stories that I could tell you, but I don't have time to get into all that. But the main thing is I want you to understand that God cares about every tiny detail of your life. Every little thing that concerns you, God cares about it. And he will be delighted when you begin to let him into every area of your life and not just think that he's for a Sunday morning for 45 minutes.
our comforter. He is our helper, our counselor. How many times do we go and ask somebody for advice? And they don't even know what they're doing, let alone be qualified to tell us what we ought to do. <laughs> Amen? Now, listen, you know, I'm not against getting professional counseling if you need it. But here again, go to God first. Go to God first. I mean, I had a mountain of problems in my life. And God fixed them. He gave me the answers to every problem that I had. And I can tell you, if you want to go pay for it, that's fine. And some people need that. Sometimes we need to go to somebody who understands things better than we do. I guess in a certain way, I'm counseling you with the Word of God. But I'm just telling you, even before you go to a friend, it's not wrong to ask people for advice. The Bible says there's wisdom in many counselors, safety in many counselors. But we have to stop depending on people and start depending on God. Because I'll tell you the truth, I can't help you if God doesn't anoint me to do it. And so there's no reason for you to come to me without going to God first. If I were you, every morning before you turn that TV program on to watch the Enjoying Every Dive TV program that we bring to you, you need to go to God first and say, God, I pray that you'll help me through this program today. Don't just expect me to do it. I don't want that pressure. <laughs> and, and if we'll go to God first, we'll get so much more even out of our ministers than what we do. We've got to get our eyes off of people and get them on God. People can only help you to the degree that God helps them to help you. And then he's our helper, and I love that one because I happen to be a person who needs a ton of help. And you know, that actually is my most spiritual prayer. Help me. God, help me. Sometimes I don't even know what I need help with. Sometimes I will just go around saying, help me, God, help me, help me, help me. Oh, God, help me. Do you ever just get into one of those places where you don't even know what you need, but you know that you really need help? I love it that God is my helper. And then he is also our intercessor. I love that. He prays for us, through us, he prays through other people for us. He shows us how to pray when we don't know how to pray as we ought to because only the Spirit of God knows the mind of God. Amen. Amen? So I'm grateful that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are interceding. He is our advocate. That's like our lawyer. We have an adversary, and that's the devil, but we have an advocate who stands before the bar of justice and pleads for us day and night. And I love this one. I guess if I had to pick one out of all of them, which I'm glad I don't, we get the whole thing. But if I had to pick one, I guess I would probably say I lean on this strengthening thing probably more than any others. My gosh, I would not start a day without asking God to strengthen me. God, help me resist evil today. Help me resist temptation. God, strengthen me in my physical body. Strengthen me to be able to do the things that I need to do. Give me the creativity that I need, God, to bring the word to the people that you want me to bring. Don't you dare go out of your house without asking God to strengthen you because I can tell you on your own, you don't have what it takes and neither do I. God, I need your strength. We need physical strength. I don't know about you, but I need mental strength. My mind has been around a few years. And I've worked it pretty hard. And some days it just doesn't seem to want to get up and go with me where I want to go. And so I thank God that I have the word and I can confess I have the mind of Christ. And my mind is being renewed day by day. And I ask you to strengthen me in my mind, God. Help me remember the things that I need to remember. He's our strengthener. And I especially love this one. He's our standby. That covers all the rest. If anything was missed, then he's just standing by in case you need something. He's there. I'm here. I love that. Standing by just in case there's a little opening in your life. 
Have you ever been on standby to get on an airplane? Well, basically what that is, is you're there waiting. See if there's an opening. Well, the Holy Spirit is our standby. He's just there waiting to see if there's an opening where we'll say, comfort me, help me, teach me, lead me, guide me, show me what to do, show me how to pray. We gotta begin to lean on the Holy Spirit like never before. And then he comes into close fellowship with us. I love that. Did you see that in John 16? He will come into close, intimate fellowship with you. I love it. Now let's look at verses 12 and 13. John 16, 12 and 13. I still have many things to say to you, Jesus said, but you're not able to bear them or to take them upon you or to grasp them now. Do you know what would happen if God were to suddenly show each one of us everything that's wrong with us? That's why this journey that we have with God must be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the only one, now listen to me, the Holy Spirit is the only one who knows when we're ready for what. He's the only one that knows just when to reveal something to us, how to go about it, how to get us in the right place, how to get us in the right frame of mind where we're ready to receive what God wants us to receive. He is, he guides us, doesn't shove us, he guides us into all truth. It's only the truth that makes us free. Well, you see, when I started this little serious journey with God 37 years ago, I was deceived, up to my eyeballs deceived. I'd been abused sexually by my dad for many years and mistreated really by lots of different people and my life was just one big pain. That's all I was, was, I was just a pain, walking around. And when you're full of pain, you give other people pain. And so I was unhappy and I was busy making a lot of other people unhappy, but I was sure it was their fault I was unhappy and I knew if they would change, then I would stop making them unhappy because then I would be happy. <laughs> and God began to reveal truth to me. And it wasn't all easy, I'm gonna tell you, it was not all easy. If you won't receive truth, you are not gonna get well. Do you understand me? If you won't receive truth, there's not one of us that can be well. We cannot be healed. We cannot have our souls uh, repaired and healed by God if we won't face truth. And it's not the truth about somebody else we need to face. It's the truth about us that we need to face. But thankfully, the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. But when he, verse 13, when he, the spirit of truth, the truth-giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not even speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell you whatever he hears from the Father. Even the Holy Spirit doesn't speak on his own. He will only give the message that had been given to him. He will announce, declare, disclose, and bring it unto you. So let's go over these, this list again real quick. He's our comforter, our counselor, our helper, our intercessor, our advocate, our strengthener, our standby. He comes in to be in close fellowship with us. He is our teacher and he guides us into all truth. Can we give God a big praise for the Holy Spirit? You know, a lady named Kathy shared with us on Facebook how one of my books that I've not offered in a long time has really blessed her and changed her life. I'm actually gonna read you what she sent in. She said, as I was reading your awesome book, Knowing God Intimately, a book that I really love, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. My life has been amazing ever since. I'm 64 years old and I never understood that God wanted to give me this beautiful gift. You know, the wonderful Holy Spirit is our helper, our counselor, our advocate, our intercessor, and we need to be hungry for a supernatural endowment of power so we can live a really dynamic life.
Hey everybody, we are here in Tanzania, and we're in the middle of Tanzania in a land where the Datoga people live. And my first visit here was over a year ago, and the conditions of what we saw here just absolutely broke Shelly and Mai's heart. There was no water, people would have to walk for hours and hours one way to get dirty water. There was no education, and so we started planning and, and asking how can we make a difference in this. And so today, we're here and we have just dedicated one of five wells that we've dug in this area. And these are not just wells, they're solar paneled with pumps and they have reservoirs of 10,000 liters and they will just change this whole community. And we've dedicated a primary school that will, will do grades one, two, three, four, five. So we've literally changed this entire community uh, here in Tanzania and we just couldn't do it without you. So we're so grateful, the people are so appreciative and we say thank you and God bless you. Iedere dag worden we door vele stemmen, gedachten en meningen overspoeld. Hoe kunnen we erachter komen wat God ons door bepaalde levensvragen en dagelijkse uitdagingen zeggen wil? Joyce Meyer legt in dit boek uit op welke verschillende manieren God met je kan communiceren. Bestel nu... Hoe je God stem kunt horen, telefonisch op 026 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-meyer.nl. Het computerteam van Joyce Meyer Ministries werkt met man en macht aan onze Nederlandse website. They're faster speed and they're going to have a much better web-based experience. Well, I'm just curious. If we would add a Series 12 flux capacitor, wouldn't we gain as much as a terabyte in data encryption? Wow, that's really out of the box thinking. What's your name? Joyce. That's the kind of stuff that's going to make JoyceMeyer.org a better website. Ga naar onze nieuwe site joyce-meyer.nl en volg ons op Facebook.